Hans Grunert knows the Karl May Museum and its exhibits like the back of his hand. And he firmly believes that the controversial scalp is a part of Northern American history and belongs in the collection. The Indiana stirred. There was a move to get rid of the Native Americans. One way of doing this was to offer a bounty for scalps. Hunters, trappers or anyone who had nothing to do could shoot Native Americans, scalp them and sell the scalps to the relevant authorities. For decades, the museum in Radebeul near Dresden has been home to stuffed bears, life-size models of Native Americans and accessories including scalps. But the Ojibwe Native Americans from Michigan want one of them back. I will make every attempt to make the world know of this horrific display and dehumanization of Native Americans. I shall continue to fight for the repatriation of these ancestors. What we found offensive was the aggressive tone of the letter. Nonetheless, we replied in a friendly manner, telling them that we were willing to enter into dialogue. The museum manager tries to avoid conflict with Native Americans as a matter of course, but she believes it is important to talk about the use of scalping as a war ritual. That's why she wants to keep the Ojibwe scalp. Giving it back is a different issue because it is our property. You can't just turn up and say, give me that. And besides, its origin and ownership have to be proven. In a Karl May fashion, perhaps. The best-selling author was a fantasist with a checkered past. When not in prison, he wrote about cowboys and Indians without ever having stepped foot in the Wild West. Generations of German children grew up on the clichés of Brave Winnetou. One fan, Patty Frank, went to the U.S. to collect Native American artifacts. Legend has it, he acquired the Ojibwe scalp in 1904 for two bottles of whiskey, $100, and a shot of brandy. He wanted to show off his collection and wrote on it, Scalp from an Ojibwe, but we don't know how he came up with the idea. That could be true, or it might not be. He told a lot of stories that were a little exaggerated. He also wrote that he bought it at a reservation in 1904, but so far we have no proof that he was even in America in 1904. Such details are of little interest to Native American Red Hair Crow. The writer, who lives in Berlin, says the scalps contain ancestral energy and soul and should be sent back to Michigan. They believe that a person is not whole if parts have been taken away from them. And also it's, uh, it's a feeling that uh, the person is in a type of limbo or purgatory where they cannot move on to the next life if a piece of them is not uh, at least in the soil or buried or have this ceremony to be given back to the earth. The Überzee Museum in Bremen is familiar with demands for artifacts to be returned. Director Wiebke Arndt has written guidelines for other German museums facing calls for the handover of exhibits in their collections. It's important to look at each individual case and see what it is really about and who wants it back. Does whoever want it back have a right to it? A museum should look really carefully at who they're dealing with, because the worst thing that can happen is that you give something back to the wrong person. Shortly before the Karl May Festival in Raderbeul, the museum suggested a compromise by removing the original scalps from public display. This is a dummy. We have replaced the original scalps. I understand it to an extent, but by the same token, it is part of the cultural history of the indigenous population of North America, and it ought to be possible to show that cultural history. There are protests that, uh, that are being planned, that are being discussed at this moment for um, for the Karl May Festival and for the museum, especially during that time, to bring awareness and to educate the public. Although the scalps have been removed from view, the Native Americans still want them back. And until they get them, the battle axe cannot be buried.